So dudes, it's Tuhu. Plus you made this tweet yesterday saying that lottery events and exhibition quests, or EQs for short, should in fact be put together, but they just need to have better rewards to better incentivize players to actually do them. Normally, as someone who's played every lottery event we've had, including all the ones that we've had lots of challenge quests for, including the Nero Fests and the Gil Fests, I would agree, since they've been a core part of lottery events that I would have considered, at the time, just as important as the farming itself. But times have changed, and so have my views on this matter to the point where I felt the need to respond to Plushie's tweet by making this video saying that if Lazengle insists on pulling the absolute bullshit that was Tesla Fest with its 31 challenge quests or whatever the grand total number of EQs was for future lottery events, then no, I don't think EQs should belong in lotteries anymore. Let me explain to you why I feel this way first, then how I think the situation should have been handled, or at the very least how it should be handled going into the future. There were several major issues that I saw with how EQs worked in Tesla Fest, so let's start with the sheer number of them. Again, 31 EQs. Both of the Tesla Coil quest chains had 7, both of the Exhibition quest chains had 8, plus the CQ that's new to Tesla Fest, so yeah, you add them up and you get 31. There is no reason why any event should have had this many CQs at once, let alone during a fucking lottery event, but because this was a lotto, they could have potentially taken so much time away from farming for those who needed to farm this lottery a lot, especially considering this lotto had things like, I don't know, bones, bullets, and arrowheads. Next issue that I want to bring up here is the fact that the EQs were fucking time-gated, as in you couldn't do them right away right as Tesla Fest opened, and instead they only opened up like 5 days in or so. This might not sound like that big of an issue, and compared to my other points in my video here, perhaps not, but as someone who's farmed hundreds, even thousands of boxes in past lottos, I feel obligated to bring this up anyway. This arbitrary time gate was really bad because this vibe checks people farming the lottery so hard for literally no reason. For those of you who don't farm lotteries that much, the idea with farming lottos is that you want to get as much lottery currency drop CEs as possible to maximize your farming efficiency, since lottery events only give you four or lottery currency CE drops from the shop and the rest you gotta farm on your own as rare drops from the event farming nodes. This means that the more you farm, the more lottery CE drops that you can expect to get, which in turn makes your farming efficiency better over time. But because the EQs for Tesla Fest were time-gated, and like, you couldn't do them until 5 days in, they interrupted people's farming progress hard, since now they have to take the time out of their farming just as they've gotten a couple of lottery CE drops to watch their farming efficiency finally get better, to then have to bust their balls over the EQs, which could take them, you know, god knows how much time, depending on how well invested their accounts are and how familiar they are with those EQs. And because of these mechanics of the EQs, and oftentimes the difficulty and the RNG nature of them as well, new or old player, it doesn't matter, you're spending a lot of time on those that you might have preferred using to farm the lottery a little bit more. One thing people may point out here is the fact that previous lottery events time-gated their own CQs just like Tesla Fest did, so technically this isn't anything new, and that all the EQs except for the new one exclusive to Tesla Fest were all old CQs that we've already done before. And you're right on both points, sure, but in turn, I'd like to point out that we haven't had a lottery event before with 31 EQs, and when you have that many, uh, I think that kind of changes the dynamics of a lottery event at that point, not to mention not everyone's done the old EQs before. Another thing people might say is, you know, well, just do the EQs at the very end after you're done farming the event. And sure, that might have been the game plan for a lot of players out there, but, you know, there were also a lot of other players out there who wanted to farm the lottery as much as possible, all the way through the end. And as I'll elaborate later with how I had to do the EQs myself, saving them until the very end wasn't the greatest idea either. So I still think that it would have been much better if the EQs were available right at the start of the event, so that way if people wanted to, they could get them out of the way first and then start farming, so that way they can just farm the rest of the event without having to be interrupted. The next issue that I have was the difficulty of those EQs. Again, in a vacuum, with no other external circumstances, EQs or CQs or whatever you want to call them should be hard. I mean, they're called challenge quests for a reason, right? But how do you think it's okay to have 30 plus EQs on one event on top of how bullshit they were? Like, bro, most challenge quests aren't too bad for normal events, and they only have one CQ at a time, maybe two every now and then. So, what the fuck kind of retard do you have to be to shove 31 of the kind of EQs we got during Tesla Fest into not just any event, but a lottery event, and think that's okay? 
Again, the excuse of, oh, well, they're all old challenge quests, so if you did them before, you should be able to do them again, isn't an adequate enough justification here to shove those things back down the player base's throat a third time with the circumstances that they had in Tesla Fest. And that's not even including the fact that newer players who haven't done them before, again, just get fucked over, straight up. Like, ask people if they had any fun doing the, I don't know, for example, the MHXA quest a second, a third, or however many fucking times we've had to do that shit by the time Tesla Fest came around. And I have a fucking bone to pick with the Tesla Coil quest chains in particular, because those were specifically designed for veteran players. For those of you who didn't bother with the Coil chains, the idea with these is that you can't take a support, if you use servants in one quest, you cannot reuse them for another within the same chain, and you have to do all seven in a row, or whatever order you choose I suppose, without resetting though, to finish the Coil. This absolutely kills the ability of newer or less invested players to do them, because they simply won't have the resources to throw seven separate teams at them. And because these are less dedicated players we're talking about here, they might not know how to plan out their teams properly, even if they did have the resources. Especially considering FGO teaches you, you know, to rely on supports because the game forces you to take one for 99% of its content, and then it fucking pulls the wheelchair out from under your ass by not letting you take a support all of a sudden? Now, to be fair, for Tesla Fest, ultimately you didn't have to do the coil chains because while they did give you a handful of materials if you finish them, you could afford to just skip these because the rewards overall weren't that good. Like the best thing you got were like the lores, but you could afford to just skip those too with how many lores the game throws at us nowadays on average with all our other events. And so if I'm understanding Plushy's argument here properly, this is at least part of the reason why he's pushing for EQs in lottery events to have better rewards, which normally I would actually agree with, like I said earlier, but that won't end up fixing all the problems here that I see. Matter of fact, if we get more lottery events like Tesla Fest just now, with 31 bullshit EQs or whatever, I would argue this is just gonna make the situation even worse. Because let's say, you know, EQs do end up getting much better rewards during lottery events. Things that you would normally really like to have, like I don't know, like grails or costumes, or even worse, some kind of like one-time super exclusive item that you can only get from this particular CQ, and it's part of a, again, a lottery event, and there are 30 other CQs just like this that also have their own super exclusive rewards of some kind, and they're all bullshit hard, and they're time-gated for no reason so that you have less time than you should to get them all done. At this point, Right? How do you expect anyone, except for us veteran players, to have any chance in hell to do them all for all the rewards? Like, the newer players, again, are just gonna get giga-fucked by this, because either they can't do those EQs in the first place, and so they're gonna have to let go of those rewards, or they'll give it a try, because they think that they can do it, you know, maybe their friends on Discord tell them, oh shit, like, you know, oh, you know, you'll be fine, man, just use this team, like, just use Immortal Team, and you'll get it done no problem, only to waste several hours on that EQ and realize they probably can't do it after all? Uh, and those couple of hours could have gone into something like farming, which is a lot more productive at that point instead. As a tangent here, I personally could only start working on the Tesla Fest CQs myself at the very end of the event, since that was the only time that I had to actually do them. And I'm flabbergasted that I was still able to get all but two of them done in just 15 hours or so over two streams. So if someone like me needs that much time to go through all of them, what chance in hell do most other players have if they only had that much time themselves too? Oh, and a daily reminder, Los Angles forgotten how to do reruns since they spent all their budget for this year until 9th anniversary updating the French girls' animations. So if you can't do these CQs now, right, you'll basically never see them again which means you'll never get a second chance to obtain those super good rewards either if you don't get them done now. At least you won't see them again for another, I don't know, six or seven or eight years or however long it took FGO to bring back old welfare servants. Then what? What are you going to tell people then? Skill issue? And so this is the problem that I see with Plushy's suggestion from his tweet earlier this week. It is painfully ignorant of most of the problems that TeslaFest had with its EQs. It fails to take into account that lottery events are farming events first and foremost. 
that you use to power up your account so that you are in a good position to play the EQs. And the fact that in Tesla Fest, all these EQs getting vomited on the players basically completely disregards that. But more importantly, the EQs during Tesla Fest disrespected people's time because of their sheer volume and general difficulty levels that they posed and God knows how much we all need as much time as we can get to do everything we want these days. Hey, I remember back when EQs were meant to be this little fun side thing that you could do if you were feeling a little burnt out from all the farming you've been doing in that lottery event and wanted to do something a little different for a change of pace before going back to farming. That's what they were in part for me back when I made my NeuroFest 2 CQ videos back in the day because despite me farming what, like 600 boxes without FGA, mind you, I still had enough fun with those CQs to take the time out of my farming and go record those videos about them. And to be fair, again, I don't think Plushy is saying that Lottos and EQs have to be together, just that they can be together, right? I think his core point was that it's a shame that EQs can, in his eyes anyway, can be so easily skipped because there's not enough of an incentive for people to actually do them if they really don't want to. But if the Tesla Fest EQs are indicative of what we can expect out of future lottery events, then the original concept of lottery events of them, you know, being the training arc, so to say, to those exhibition quests is fundamentally destroyed simply because they're part of the exact same limited event. Even if some players are able to complete something like the Tesla Fest EQ gauntlet that we just got, you know, like us veteran players, that doesn't mean everyone can. And if this continues to be the case, then at that point, no, I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't agree with Plushy here. I'd have to argue for the separation of EQs from lottery events. I could end the video here and kick back to watch the drama between me and Plushy unfold, but instead, before that happens, what I'll do now is provide some counter suggestions that I think will work out better. There are two ways that we can go about this, and I think one of them is far better than the others, so let me start with the worst one first. We can keep the ridiculous number of EQs in Tesla Fest for a future lottery, but we remove the time gate so that you can do them at the very start of the event if you want to, and we give them, you know, much better rewards like plushie suggests costumes command codes and personally i would bump up the uh, number of lottery currency drops that you get as rewards all the way up to like i don't know 50 boxes worth but most importantly we tone down the difficulty for these eqs honestly all ozinga would have to do here is like reduce enemy damage output by like half or a third and they'd probably be okay the gimmicks themselves aren't the issue it's the combination of those gimmicks and enemies potentially triple buster critting your servants to death on any random turn. I'm looking at you, Romulus. And the fact that you had 30 fucking one of these challenge quests to go through that made Tesla Fest EQs so insufferable. It's either that, or we keep the difficulty of the EQs, but instead we cap the number of EQs that we get at 10 and no more. But I'm not a big fan of this idea myself, because these are exhibition quests, or challenge quests, or whatever you want to call them, and they're meant to be hard right? It's in the name. So making them easier would defeat the purpose of calling them challenge quests. Um, and I actually don't like the idea of capping the number of EQs we get either, because that's just more content that we get. And on its own, I don't think anyone's against that. So the better idea that I have here is to not only take out EQs from lotteries, but also make them their own event. Even better, I think La Zengo should implement a section, a new section in Caldea Gate, where they can put these EQs as permanent content. Like, I remember somebody in my chat earlier suggesting that they could even make a whole challenge quest tower or something like that. I would imagine something like the tribe tower in Nike. And by making these permanent, you solve all the issues that I had with the Tesla Fest EQs. Because now, you have the time to prepare for and challenge these EQs on your own, whenever you want or whenever you feel like you're ready. So you're not pressed for time during a limited time lottery event that only runs for, you know, less than two weeks or whatever, when ideally you want to spend as much time farming the lottery itself, right? When in comparison, all our other events going forward are going to last for three. Sure, there can still be some challenge quests in future lotteries, and they can be tough, but they shouldn't be anywhere near as bullshit as the Tesla Fest EQs, and there certainly shouldn't be anywhere near as many. And lastly, EQs being a separate permanent game mode also means that you can both make them as difficult and bullshit as the Tesla Fest EQs, and lock big rewards behind them at the same time. 
the best counterbalance that players have against EQ difficulty and RNG bullshit is time. The time to invest into the proper team that you think you need to take on a challenge quest, the time to play it and, you know, figure out its gimmicks, and the time to try again and again, you know, if RNG fucks you over until you're finally able to beat it. So by making them permanent content, as long as the EQs have a clear game plan that you can put together to beat them, right, they can retain their difficulty levels and still be... fair. And of course, what makes them worth it in the end are the rewards that you get by completing them, right? These rewards should be enticing, like Plushie says, especially because if they're going to be permanent content, if the rewards for beating them aren't that good, you know, people won't bother doing them here either and just ignore them anyway. Specifically, the rewards could be the usual suspects like, you know, lores and grails, of course. Uh, plushy suggestions of costumes and command codes are good too, especially if the command codes are really, really good. Um, my suggestions would be to add things like, you know, a full set of 50 gold foes to like instantly 2k 2k a servant. Especially since, you know, gold foes are really hard to come by usually, or it's very slow to accumulate them normally. Um, or, like a token or something that instantly maxes out any servant you want. Uh, similar to the free ascension thing that you get, you know, that every account gets uh, once. But uh, instead of just taking a servant to level 80 or their fine, just their final ascension, it literally max levels them, right? Take a 5 start to straight to level 90. And it maxes out their main skills instantly to 10 too. And gives them 1k foes. Or hell, even a universal servant ticket would be nice that you can redeem for any servant that's ever been put into the game and ever will be added. Right, meaning that you can keep this ticket to exchange for a brand new servant as they come out, or you can redeem it for, say, an old servant that you missed out on and you don't know if they're going to get another rate up or not, or when they will. Uh, so for a 5 star, it should get you a free copy, of course, just one. But for a 4 star, it should get you an MP5 copy immediately. And for 3 stars, it should get you enough copies of that limited 3 star to not only 120, but also triple append them. So yeah, permanent challenge content and banger rewards for clearing them. That's how I would handle the situation. I was gonna end a video there. I thought I would end a video there. I was even hoping I could end a video there. But, unfortunately for both you and me, Plushy, I'm not done. Earlier yesterday, at the time of me recording this, I saw you came into my Discord server and pinged me with a couple of messages. Uh, mind you, I was AFK at the time, because I was busy dropping off and picking up a buddy of mine at the Auto concert in downtown LA. And, uh, seeing that LA traffic is fucking miserable. Uh, imagine my pleasant surprise when the first thing I saw when I pulled up Discord when I got back home was this. Now, on your own, these messages have concerns that I think are legitimate, right? Particularly the part about your hot take series. Uh, I'll concede that uh, I don't watch them on a regular basis, and so I could be wrong about them just being hot takes. But you accuse me of criticizing your content before watching it properly first. And I find that kind of interesting, because I don't think you watch my streams either. Because if you did, you would know that this is how I sometimes like to talk in my own stream. Right? I like talking shit about all sorts of things, and it's not serious. And for some extra context here, since I was going through all the Tesla Fest EQs, or as many of them as I could in only two days, again, I mentioned earlier that I managed to knock out almost all of them except for two of them in just two streams, I wasn't having much fun. Uh, it, it was rough. And guess what? Talking shit about FGO was one of my coping mechanisms while I was going through them. And mind you, I don't just trash talk FGO, I can trash talk my other gacha games too if I feel like it and I have. So yeah, naturally, even before your tweet got brought up to me, I was talking mad shit about the game. The bullshit nature of the EQs and all that. So when it did get brought up, naturally, I started talking shit about it and you too. Well, specifically your content. Again, it wasn't serious, it just sounded like it was because I was playing through all the EQs at the time, and so there was definitely some salt in there from me having to reset some runs from bad RNG and stuff like that. So hey Plushy, um, I just want to ask you, can you watch my streams first too, so that you know that this is how I can be sometimes? Again, it's not just towards FGO that I can sound like this, by the way. Uh, I can be like this to literally anyone or anything if I feel like it. But you wouldn't know this because you don't watch my content either. So um, don't feel special, you know, just because I so happen to have a reason to talk shit about you and your content this time. 
And speaking of content, by the way, I want to point out that if your hot take series really isn't just, you know, a couple of simple hot takes and actually have in-depth servant testing, um, why the fuck did you decide to name it something like hot takes, right? Why not, why not something more to the point like, I don't know, like complete analysis, my analysis of so-and-so servant on FGOJP, right? I don't feel the need to name my own servant how-to series something like Hot Takes, so why should you? I could also roast your ass for using this fucking self-victimizing language, considering your original tweet about lottos and EQs says that you're, quote, prepared for backlash, don't worry, end quote, which I guess you must have not been quite as prepared for uh, if you're reacting like this, huh? But... It's not worth my time going into this beyond what I've said here. Instead, I think I would have preferred uh, you contacting me privately via Twitter or Discord DMs and giving me your concerns that way. Because like I said, I wasn't in the greatest of mindsets while I was going through all those EQs. So having you talk to me and point out that maybe some of the things I said about you were unfounded and that you just want to make sure that I'm not about to go nuclear on your ass would have convinced me to take a step back. Matter of fact, when I was writing the script for this video, uh, I wasn't planning on trashing your content or deliberately stirring up drama, I just wanted to give my take on your tweet, saying that no, with how Teslafest handled their EQs, I don't think that lotteries and EQs should be together anymore if that's how they're gonna be from now on. And here's the thing, you know that I'm capable of this conversation because we had a conversation like this back last year when I made my video responding to your hot take about how you said you should roll for coin light over oberon and i took the opposite stance of saying that you should roll oberon over coin light but i guess it turns out that it's not just legitimate discourse that you care about responding to but even something as small and insignificant as me talking shit about your content in my own stream and so you jumped the gun like you didn't even wait for me to get this video out first and see how i would respond to your original tweet you were so bothered by some trash talk that you fucking waltzed over to my discord and started talking your shit. And before you ask, hell no, I don't give a fuck if random asshats on the internet want to talk shit about me. I am well past the point of caring. As long as they keep it in their corner of the internet and they don't make it a point to shove it in my fucking face. Sure, I might find out about it when, you know, other people bring it up to me or tell me about it or something. But, you know, for the most part, I'll just laugh it off and not care and keep doing whatever the fuck I was doing. But now it seems to me that you don't have that same capacity. And so you thought it was a great idea to come into my discord. Discord server, ping me not once, but twice in the fucking general channel where everyone on my server can see your shit. Again, you didn't send me a Twitter DM or even fucking messaged me privately on Discord. You just barged into my server and started demanding answers from me in my own general chat. So yeah, uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't do this again. Uh, in exchange, I'll make sure that I never talk trash about you or your content ever again. Mainly because I'd rather not have to talk about someone like you in the first place any longer. Oh hey Ro, nice tweets you got there by the way. I didn't even talk about you at all and yet you still felt the need to get involved, huh? <sighs> I thought you were cool, but you know, birds of a feather I guess. Or at sight of that or plushy's dick must taste that good, huh? For everyone else watching this still, I suppose the takeaway for you guys is that if you are an FGO content creator and you ever criticize anything Plushy says in his videos or on Twitter, anything from legitimate discourse on the game or just random shit talk, you can expect him to show up in your Discord server and ask you to kindly reconsider your thoughts, otherwise he'll be, quote, forced to make a response video, end quote. I look forward to seeing his for me, because I won't be watching it. Anyways, that's enough gasoline pouring from me. Don't worry, NA, I got you all the content that you'll need right here to last you all the way up until Archetype Earth shows up, so kick back with me, grab some popcorn, and let's watch the world burn together.